Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Joe Yim of Knox at Barbecue, and today I'm gonna to show you how to slice brisket like a pro. So we spent all day cooking this brisket and also spent a couple hours resting it. The last thing we wanna do is mess this brisket up by slicing it incorrectly. There's different ways that you can serve it, different purposes, whether they're slices or for chopped beef sandwiches and things like that. I'm gonna show you how to use every single part of this brisket to maximize your portions. Okay, this brisket is fully rusted. It's sitting at 155 right now and this thing is ready to cut. Um, before we get into cutting, I'm just going to talk about the knife that I'm going to be using today. This is just a 12 inch slicing knife or carving knife. It's also a bread knife. This one has the serrations on it. I personally like using a knife with serrations because I think it helps kind of cut through the bark a little bit better and then afterwards the blade is long enough where we can get really nice clean slices out of your brisket. Usually when you're opening up a brisket out of butcher paper, there's really not much to it, but sometimes the paper does stick to each other. So when you're doing so and you feel like it is, just be very careful because if you're a little bit too aggressive, you might end up kind of shredding your brisket. So if you do feel a little slight tug on that paper, just be a little more cautious. In terms of shape, it doesn't look that much different, but the feel of it is a lot different than when we pull it off. It doesn't have that like memory foam pillow feel that we've been talking all day about in terms of like how your brisket should feel. Cause after that long rest, it's starting to kind of relax and we're getting back to that sliceable texture that we uh, are looking for at this point. So it should have a little bit more structure. It's not as bendy as it was before. It's tender, but it's not super, super soft. This is the lean portion and this is the point. This is where all like the fat and the marbled section of the brisket is. Uh, and then this portion right here is also where we took out the heel fat. This is kind of like where the burn ends of a brisket comes from, from a Texas style brisket. There aren't really any burn ends typically in Texas style barbecue. That's usually a Kansas City style barbecue type thing. But I think over the years, a lot of people who visit Texas, always ask if they have burn ends. So usually yeah, at restaurants, cutters kind of give them this portion if it's available. First slice that we're gonna do is kind of right in the middle where the lean and the fatty kind of meet. And generally if we trimmed it right, it's typically right in the center right here. So with this knife, a lot of times you're taught to curl your fingers when you're slicing food or you're, or you're cutting things with knife work. But for this brisket, because it is pretty delicate up top with all the fat and the bark, I'm gonna use the side of my thumb kind of as a gauge, almost as like you would use a, like the top of your knuckles, but because with a longer blade and we just wanna make sure this is nice and even, using the side of your thumb kind of helps that brisket not wobble quite as much when you're trying to slice through this. And in the beginning, we wanna have a couple of short strokes using the serrations of a knife kind of break through the bark. Then you can use the entire length of the blade to make nice clean slices. Even after that long rest, we still have quite a bit of juice kind of flowing out of this brisket. You know, definitely don't want to push down on it. You don't want to squeeze all the moisture out of the brisket. And with this brisket, we see the smoke ring around it. We got that fat that's not like super, super white. It's got a little bit of that golden color that's giving us the idea that we rendered it properly with that little bit of high heat like we had towards the end of a cook. So it's gonna be a much sweeter flavor. Even though this brisket might be super, super rich, that extra little bit of smoke is gonna bring a little bit of balance to the entire slice in the brisket. So we're gonna deal with slicing the lean first. And right now we got a little bit of that point still attached to the top and it's perfectly fine. Uh, but when we slice these leans, we want probably a quarter, uh, a little less than a quarter of inch slices. We want them kind of thin, but thick enough to where they still have some structure. And as you guys can see, I'm using my thumb kind of as that gauge to give me the right and even thickness all the way across and have a nice pull all the way through. Maybe you cooked a little bit too hot and the edges are a little bit more crispy. You can always kind of hold that top portion if it's a little flaky with your fingers back here. So as you pull, all that meat kind of comes together off that slice. In the same way, if I'm slicing the back end is a little shreddy or it's a little overcooked, I can use my thumb as I pull down to make sure I get a nice clean slice. The one thing that we don't want is it to shred. So if you feel like you need to go a little bit slower in order to make sure that the slices are nice and clean, just take your time. You just want to make sure that your slices are nice and even. If you get them to be super thick, they might be a little bit too chewy. 
Um, so getting that right thickness, like think about like a slice that you want to put on a sandwich. Like if you're eating like a steak sandwich, you want it to be thick enough where it has a little bit of structure and some chew to it, but not so thick that like you're biting out a huge chunk of meat. And then at the end of this portion of lean, this is also kind of what some people like. It's kind of like the burn end of the lean portion. So we're going to leave this a little bit thicker on the end just because the slices are super small. But as you can see, the fat on the top is like really, really caramelized and kind of golden. And these are kind of like little nuggets and little samplers that uh, restaurants or, or the cutters will give uh, customers in line. So for these, cut them into little blocks and cubes. That way, when you're feeding customers in line, hopefully you'll give them a bite and they order a pound and a half because it's so good. So that's the deal. So with all these slices, just because we're cutting through the entire thing, we want to make sure all the slices are right next to each other and keep them close. As it gets cut, it's gonna dry out really quickly. It's gonna change color. So as much as possible, keep those slices right next to each other um, just until you're ready to serve them. Now we're getting to the point, and this is probably what everyone is looking for. Just because it has all that marbling, it has all that fat, it has a little bit more texture, it has a little more height, so it looks a little bit bigger and better. This is the portion where we lopped it off because that was that mohawk that was sticking up um, so there's not quite as much meat on this side so this kind of half to maybe 60 percent of the brisket like this is the prime portion right here this part's a little bit leaner so if you go to a barbecue restaurant and you ask for fatty or you ask for the point and they're trying to serve you this portion say I don't want that and give me another brisket because this is a lot of just a lot of fat and gristle. The grain of the muscle is gonna change. So as we go up to this point in the lean, all the muscle fibers are going this way. But as the muscle changes, the grain of the muscle on the point is gonna, is gonna change. So we're gonna twist this 90 degrees so that we are actually cutting against the grain of the point muscles. Most people will say like, my brisket was really, really chewy. And it usually has to do with like one, it's a little undercooked or they're probably cutting the brisket the wrong way. Now with this portion, we're gonna cut these slices a little bit thicker. The reason being, there's a lot more fat and a lot more collagen kind of going on here. And if you cut them really razor thin, it's most likely gonna fall apart while you're trying to cut it. So this end portion is that burnt ends that everyone's looking for. It has all the bark on the outside, pretty much all the salt and pepper caked on there. But then when you flip over to show the inside, you got all that marbling speckled throughout. And we know that we did a good job because you can kind of see the lines of fat running through the entire piece. If you cook it too hot, or if you've had this side of the brisket too close to the fire, it almost will look like discolored and really, really dark brown. And that has to do with the fact that it was just overcooked and just beaten over the head with like too much heat during the cook. While we're slicing these, these slices are gonna be a little bit thicker, maybe slightly over a quarter inch slices. We wanna make sure that these have some structure when we're serving it to customers. And this is the one that everyone's really looking for. For this point, we're looking for roughly about maybe half a pound per two slices. And you know, as you get used to cutting a lot, this is what you're looking for. On this edge right here, it's a little bit more dark red because that's where a lot of smoke has collected. That's where all the pepper and the salt has kind of caramelized with the fat on top. And that's what some people call kind of like the sugar cookie in barbecue, uh, even though it's not sweet at all. Uh, it's like a savory sugar cookie where all the flavors collected at this very end. And as I kind of run my finger across here, you can see how like none of the fibers are like breaking apart. Everything is held together. There's marbling in between these really thick fibers with inside this brisket. That's a perfectly, perfectly cooked brisket point. Again, like we did with the lean, we're gonna try to keep these slices together because uh, we don't want them oxidized because it's got this thick band of fat right down the middle. It can tend to wobble a little bit as you start slicing, uh, which is why keeping this hand and uh, on the side so you can press it down a little bit to get it some structure. And as you slice, trying to make sure your knife is straight, because if you take a slight angle, the brisket will get really thick towards the bottom and it will become a little bit more uneven. And with this thick piece, this pull strip is really important. Get a really nice clean slice at the bottom just so it doesn't shred as you're pulling through. And right now we're getting close to that, like we were saying earlier, that 60% that's really good. And now we're getting to a place where it's not bad, it's just not the best that it can be. 
Um, so when it gets to where we get to this mohawk or this point that is a little bit taller, some people will just flop it over and just cut off that portion because this is where all that marbled meat still exists and still nice and juicy. It still has a lot of the same kind of muscle structure as the rest of the slices that we just cut. And kind of like we did with the burn ends earlier, these are also pieces that we can uh, cut into chunks or sometimes some restaurants like to do it where instead of like big nuggets, we'll do in these long kind of strips so they look more like slices. And I think it looks a little bit better when you're serving to a customer. If I feel like there's a lot of marble and a lot of fat, I'll still serve it to a customer or I'll ask the customer, hey, would you be interested in this piece, this mohawk piece up top? You know, more people than not will love it just because it has that same sort of flavor profile as those burn ends we were talking about earlier. So just to save this, I'm going to push this against the rest of the brisket so we can keep this as moist as possible. I'm going to put these burn ends on top to, again, not expose any of these slices uh, to air. And this is the portion that we're talking about where it is the kind of 30 percent portion of that point muscle. This is all lean brisket at the bottom with a big chunk of fat. So usually if you are given this at a barbecue restaurant, it's probably used for chopped brisket um, just because there's not that much fat underneath. Uh, and this portion right here is not great for slices. So if you ever go to a barbecue restaurant and they're trying to serve you this, please ask them to give you a new brisket. So if I was on the block at a barbecue restaurant and I had a piece like this and, and it's perfect timing, like a customer comes up and they don't actually want sliced brisket, they want chopped. And if I have this portion, I think this makes for a really great chopped beef sandwich, um, just because the lean underneath here has been sitting underneath the point for a long time. It's got some good structure, it's got some moisture, but it's not overly fatty. So when we come to this point, I'm just going to take my knife and very carefully take off that fat that's sitting on top. And then I'm gonna turn it so that now I'm actually slicing against a grain of that lean like we did earlier and try to cut this really, really thin because that way when we put this onto sandwiches or we chop this up, the muscle fiber is a lot smaller and it makes it a lot easier for customers to eat. It's the reason why I turned it is because now we're cutting against the muscle grain and now it's starting to break apart a little bit more. And if I cut it the same way that we did, we get these really stretchy pieces that we can't really pull apart and that's because we're cutting with the grain of the muscle. So it's really important to understand like what muscle you're cutting on the brisket because it's going to change and turn while you're cutting throughout the entire brisket. All right, so now that we have all these pieces kind of chopped up against the grain, I'm going to usually I'll take a portion where it's like a sandwich portion, which is about a quarter, a third of a pound, depending on where you go. And now we're just going to take our bench scraper and we're just going to chop this up. So once it's all chopped up, now you kind of get these brisket chunks into reasonable sized portions. You also kind of mix in a lot of that bark that was kind of sprinkled around the edges and now you kind of get it mixed all the way through. And that little bit of fat that was sitting on top also gets mixed through. So that's a really nice bite. Uh, but in order to maximize getting a good slices of lean, good slices of your, your fatty brisket, and also taking these pieces that I wouldn't want to serve as slices and turning into chopped beef. It's just another way to, like we talked about earlier, using the entire brisket in terms of trim. Now we're finding every single way to use our brisket once it's done cooking. These are the nuggets from the very end of the lean. This is what you would normally give to customers, um, you know, as treats during the line. This is a lean brisket that we're slicing just less than a quarter of an inch. And this is the point that we slice a little bit thicker than a quarter of an inch, just because it needs a little bit more structure because all that marbling and fat that's in there. These really thin slices are coming from the lean that's sitting right underneath that mohawk. Just because it's a little bit leaner, this is also the portion that I would serve as chopped brisket. These chunks of the burn ends are coming off the very, very top of the mohawk that even though we can't get full slices, these have all the marbling and all the flavor that you would get from the moist end. The chopped brisket is just from any part of the brisket that you can't serve as slice, but if you chop it up and you get all that seasoning mixed through, it makes for a great sandwich. These are the burn end pieces that you would get on the very end of the moist end, and this is probably a slice that most people are looking for. Now that I showed you guys how to slice this brisket, I'm going to create a tray that I think kind of gives you the best parts of the brisket to feed to two or three people. I'm going to take a couple of these lean slices in the very center. These are usually 
my favorite lean slice to make and we're gonna shingle them just a little bit so everyone can see that fat that we rendered in there uh, and the grain of the muscle. I like really getting the first three slices inside this point muscle where it's nice and fatty and rich. One of the tricks that you can use is take your hand where it's greasy and just kind of rub it so it looks really nice for customers. And we'll shingle down and lay that across right here. And just because we really like the customers or your family or friends you're feeding, we're gonna give them these nice burn-in chunks that everyone is looking for. Show them a little bit of the marbling, a little bit of the bark, just give a little variety of texture. There to me is a perfect way to taste every single part of this brisket and my favorite bites throughout. I'm so happy this came out good. Subscribe to our channel and visit chefsteps.com for more tips, recipes, guides, and tools to help you level up in the kitchen.